gas heat versus electric heat. Is one better than the other? Is one less expensive than the other? Is one type of heat more efficient and effective in heating your space than the other? Tap the thumbs up icon and we'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna make this video as to the point as possible and I'm gonna to try to keep it out of the technical world, keep it on layman's terms. So you can hopefully make a, a good decision for you and your family in choosing what uh, what method you'd like to heat your home. So in short, if you're looking to save money, if you're looking for the most thrifty means to heat your space, then go with gas heat. Simple. You can end the video now. However, if you are looking for a more safe option and less headaches in regard to streamlining your billing and auto payments, then go with electric. Now, we're going to go into some details on this. In regards to gas heat and as far as the efficiency and effectiveness of heating your space, it is much more efficient and effective with heating, hands down. You can change the temperature about, I would say, for about 20 degrees for, I say, about 1,500 square feet and say, let's say you've got no higher than eight foot ceilings, you can, in about an hour to, within an hour to two hours, I would say you can change the temperature 20 degrees. That's how fast you can heat via gas. Now, electric is probably gonna be maybe three or four hours. So you're looking at up to double the amount of time to change the temperature in your given space, gas versus electric. Now, and again, gas is less expensive to make those temperature changes versus electric. Now, some people think, well, if my power goes out, if I have gas heat, I'll still have heat. That's not true. You still have electrical, electrical components in your furnace, such as things such as the fan, unless you have a generator or some type of alternate power source to power your furnace. If the power goes out, you will not have heat. Same with electric heat. Something else of note with gas heat, it will take most of the moisture out of the air, out of the space you are heating. So if you have skin, if people in your family have skin conditions, you're going to need to run a humidifier to put moisture back in the air because it will zap any moisture in your home. So if you have dry skin, for example, you're going to need to run a humidifier because it will eliminate all moisture. Something of note. Now, an issue with gas heat I've found is it's another, basically you're paying another bill versus if you have electric heat. If you have electric heat, that's simply going to be on your power bill. If you have gas heat, you're going to have a separate gas bill. So it's one more payment, one more auto payment, one more bill that you got to worry about every month. Also, you will have to pay a surcharge to whoever owns the pipelines in your area. Now, we're talking mostly in regards to natural gas heat. Now, you can also apply a lot of this video to propane heat, for example. But primarily for this example, we're going to use natural gas. So natural gas, there's pipelines running in your area in, in most places and there's a company that owns those pipelines. There are, are various companies, for example, in the Atlanta area, it would be Atlanta Gaslight that owns the actual pipelines. So you're gonna have an Atlanta Gaslight charge on your gas bill every month as a surcharge, and that is non-negotiable. They set those prices and you pay it. There's nobody to negotiate with on that. It's just added on your gas bill. And it fluctuates. Of course, it's more during the colder months, the summer months. It's still 20, 30 bucks a month. And even during the summertime, if you're not using any gas, you still have your gas bill coming in. You're paying the service charges, customer service charges, your Atlanta gaslight fee every month, even for four or six months, you're not using any heat. Now, one other thing about gas heat, which is it's a, it's a bit of a pain. You have to be a decent negotiator and you have to be willing to shop because 
you typically operate on a one and or two year service contract that it's the company that supplies the gas to come through the pipelines to your home. There are many out there. They're, they're typically regional. So you just have to check who's available in your area, but shop it out. So you, you'll have different rates for one year plans, different rates for two year plans. Different companies will run different specials. Sometimes they'll offer you a hundred dollar gift card to switch over. And most of the time, the longer contract you get, say you get a, a year or a two year contract versus say a six month contract, you're going to get a better per therm rate on your gas charges. So you have to weigh all of these options, see what their customer service charge is per month, see what their per therm rate is per month. Try to find out if there are any incentives for you to switch to another company. And oftentimes there are. You can get it usually a $50, $75, $100 gift card to switch over. But like anything else, prices on everything are absolutely going up, especially on commodities such as natural gas. So it's usually advantageous to lock in a, a two-year contract. Now, I'm not aware of any contracts longer than two years. A lot of gas companies, they don't want to over leverage themselves, put themselves at, at financial risk, offering a certain per therm rate out past two years from what I've noticed. But just realize when you have gas heat, yes, you're gonna heat your home much more effective and efficiently. Therefore, it's gonna save you money, but you're gonna to have to do more footwork. You're gonna, as far as negotiating, finding different gas companies to, to go with every year or two. It's gonna be another bill or auto draft you're gonna to have to worry about. And if you'd rather just pay the extra money, pay the extra 30 to 50% extra per month during the cold months on your electric bill, it's one less bill you gotta worry about. And I'm not saying gas heat is not safe. It's very safe these days, however, Electric is always going to be safer. It's just how it is. I mean, gas is flammable. Leaks do happen. And I would say, I would, outside of the heat, I would try to minimize the, the gas you have running through your home. For example, in regards to your, your dryer, I would go with an electric dryer. In regards to your stovetop, I would go with an electric stovetop versus a gas. I mean, especially in regards to the stovetop, you're dealing with... You're dealing with flames. You're dealing with gas coming through the pipes. It's uh, it's a bit risky there. So I, I would say if you're going to use gas, just use it for your heating elements in your home and not the, the cooking and or drying in regards to laundry. It's very safe. I would buy, depending on how many square foot you're heating, I mean, say say you got 1,500 square feet, I would have a minimum of two carbon monoxide detectors and make sure those batteries are always up to date at a minimum, just as a precaution, because leaks do happen. But if you really want to go over and beyond on the safety side of things, go with electric. Get, get, the, get the gas lines capped off if you have any and just go electric. You will certainly pay a premium for that. But this just a... Uh, a few items of conversation, comment down below. What are your thoughts on gas versus electric heat? I'd love to hear what you think about it. Are you aware of any providers out there that have contracts greater than two years where you can really save on the per therm element? And tap the thumbs up icon, the subscribe button, share this video. I do appreciate you watching. Have a great day.